Hello everybody. Uh, today I thought I'll extend the, our teaching session for a bit. Uh, today I, th uh, I thought that uh, we'll uh, do uh, we'll learn how to use the mean variance function that I made for you guys and published on Twitter. And I thought might as well share a drink while we are doing this. So, cheers. I'm having a gin and tonic today. So. Uh, so basically uh, what we'll be doing is let's just go over what that function does okay so i've opened up the function in this uh, page wait let me just share the screen okay so now you'll be able to see okay so uh, this is the function that i had created so in the function uh, you can download it from twitter whenever you want i'll put a link in the description so in that you can see at the beginning of the function, if you open it in uh, notepad, you'll be able to see at the top, I've given the instructions for how to use it. Okay, so the thing is that I, uh, I make a lot of functions once in a while. So because of that, I keep forgetting how exactly I had made that function to be used. So you need to know what exact data structure you need to pass into the function and what sort of output you'll get out in the end. Okay. So that's why I write a few comments at the beginning. It's a good practice to do in your own uh, coding also. So basically what I've written is the function uses two arguments. Arguments are basically the uh, data or the logicals that you pass into the function to get the output that you desire. So basically these arguments will be used to modify the output. Okay, so uh, whatever goes into the function is called an argument. Uh, for those who do not know much about uh, coding and functions. So uh, the two, uh, there are two arguments which uh, need to go into the function. The first argument is a data frame of price values of assets within the portfolio. So suppose you want to make a portfolio, you need to know what is the proportion of each of the assets within that portfolio. Okay, uh, what uh, proportion would have given you the best risk adjusted returns? That's what mean variance portfolio is for. So if you do not know what a mean variance portfolio is you know, or an optimized portfolio is, uh, I would suggest you go to watanabe.in's uh, uh, YouTube channel. And in that, uh, there is a teaching session by Cora in which he has uh, shown how to do it in Excel. So I have basically automated the entire process in R and we'll be learning how to use this function. Okay, so if you do not know about it, you go there and learn, and then you can uh, come back to the video and uh, see how to use it in R. Okay, so it is the data frame of price values of assets within the portfolio, each column for each asset. Basically, what I want is a data frame. Okay, so data frame has got uh, columns and rows. So each column is supposed to be the asset that I want to include in the portfolio. So if you are having each column for an asset, it basically means that each row is a date. Okay, then but important, do not include date as one of the columns being passed into the function. So basically all you need is data frame of the assets that you want to pass into the function. Okay, like if I want to do a nifty gold and bond portfolio. So I'll put three columns in a data frame and pass it into the function. Okay, then the next thing that you'll need is precision of the portfolio required. So the thing is that when I made this function initially, I had made it in a little haphazard manner in which I had not considered uh, what would happen if I increase the number of uh, uh, variables or the assets in the portfolio. Okay, so what I noticed was that once I did it with uh, the three that is bond, gold and nifty, I published it on Twitter. After that, when I went back and tried to do it with uh, some uh, 10 assets in the portfolio, then basically my I got a 24 GB RAM in this computer and everything got filled basically. Okay, everything got filled, our uh, program crashed and the uh, computer basically hung. Okay, so uh, because of that, I realized that the, there is a specific weight matrix which needs to be made inside this to find out the best, uh, this one, uh, best composition. So that weight matrix was becoming so huge that it was eating up the entire uh, RAM. Okay, so the weight matrix basically uh, is exponentially related to the, the size of the weight matrix is exponentially related to the number of assets you need and the precision that you need basically. So what I decided was that I'll create gradations of precision. That is, if you uh, want a less number of assets in your portfolio, 
then you can have high precision. That is by 1%, like uh, you can have 1% precision, meaning like suppose gold can come out to 8% or 9%. Nifty can come up to 11%, 12%. So basically at 1% precision, you'll be able to get the weightage of the assets. So up till five, I kept it as high precision. Medium precision, I kept it in steps of five. So it can only be 10, 50, 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on for each asset, the weightage. Okay, so in the medium one, I fixed it at a maximum of 10 assets. And uh, uh, up to 20 assets can be, uh, if you want more than 10 assets, then I fixed it at low precision, that is 10% only. So it will jump in uh, 10%. Okay, so 10%, uh, so uh, that is basically the low precision and that allows up to 20. So if you try to go beyond that, this uh, function will give you an error. Okay, that please reduce the number of assets or reduce the precision. And more than 20 though, it won't be able to do it anyway because uh, regular computers like my 24 GB RAM is being eaten out. If you are doing it on your laptop with an 8 GB RAM, it, that will be finished like this. Okay, so best, best not to flirt around with it too much. Okay, then the, uh, so the default that I've kept is the is a low precision, uh, which has got a minimum asset allocation size of 10%. Okay, so this all I've explained here and how to use basically, uh, I'll use it like mean bar is the function that I've made. The function will include two arguments, that is the data frame and the precision that you want, high, medium and low. Uh, all of them are small letters, uh, not capital letters. And after that, it will return a list of three separate things that I'll be discussing at the end when I uh, complete uh, the running the function. Okay. So before we start using the function, what we need to do is we need to uh, decide what assets we want. We need to gather the data of the assets we want. We need to gather the uh, asset data into columns, uh, like into a data frame, which has got only those assets. And then we need to pass it on to the uh, onto this. Okay. So uh, we'll uh, use maybe our uh, uh, Nifty Bs, uh, Bharat Bonds, maybe, and Gold. Okay. So let's just use these three. So for using these three, obviously, uh, the Gold Bs, Nifty Bs, and uh, Bharat Bond, we'll need to use uh, the cash market data, the CM data that we used uh, yesterday in the previous video. Okay. So let's just start with that. Okay. First, uh, as I explained before, I'll not be repeating whatever I've done before. So you can just follow around. So in this one, uh, sorry, I've got it in the D drive. So in the D drive, in the stocks. So in the D drive, in the stocks, I've got the data that is CM data within that bar copy download within that this post 2017. So we will be using that same data. So uh, press shift, right click, you get copy as path, copy as path, and then let's start making the uh, script. Okay, so uh, data dot names into list dot files. Uh, I think you all remember whatever I had done uh, yesterday. Data dot names into list dot files so i'll be pressing uh, pasting this and in this remember we need to make the uh, slashes backslashes okay then comma let's just convert it into r okay then you need recursive equal to true and last but not the least uh, full dot names full dot names equal to true okay now after this like we did yesterday we will create a loop to uh, run through these data names and uh, collate the data okay so before that we need a empty object to dump it in so i'll be creating an empty list okay so suppose data is the name of that list list null Okay, then for i, i is the iterator in one is to length data, start the for loop. Okay, within the for loop, x is equal to v.csv, sorry, v.csv data dot names. Sorry, before that we need huh, data dot names i. 
header equal to true and as factors equal to suppose let's make it true okay in this one it hardly matters okay so i have uh, made that x after that i need to dump the x into the data okay so data i is equal to x and after this is zero It, uh, this is mainly to uh, for my satisfaction that I'll be seeing what all is done. Okay, so print is zero. This done, and then flush dot console close and close the brackets. Okay, so I made the for loop. I'm going to run the for loop and everything together. Oh, sorry. So it is list files. So it is list files, not list file. This is a spelling mistake. Okay. So control L, control L. Okay, I'll run it, run it again. Okay, something went wrong. What happened? Something went wrong. What happened? See, th these are the sort of uh, troubles that you have while you do it. I'm doing it live, so these sort of problems will keep on happening. You have to correct the error, and then again, you have to get back to doing it. So, data dot names, uh, suppose one. Okay. This seems to be okay. Everything seems to be in order. Then what is the problem? Oh, see, one is to length data. It should have been data dot names. See, these sort of problems keep on happening, so you have to just... Uh, run with it. Copy. So basically, now what it did was that for one is to length data, right? So it basically took uh, since data is null. Okay, it uh, basically filled up the first element and just dumped it into into the list. So now we'll run it again. Okay, what is happening here? Oh, again. <laughs> okay, so again, this problem, I basically am trying to paste the entire list, the basically the entire data frame as print it out and flush the console. See, the, this is the problem. Okay, so it should have been data.names. Okay, now again, we'll run it. Okay, see now it's running smoothly. Okay, so we'll just wait for it to finish. Uh, uh, before we, uh, before that finishes, let's just see what all do we want to collate. Okay, so first obviously we want Nifty bees. Control F, Gold bees. Gold bees is part of this. Yes, Gold bees is part of this. After that, uh, uh, what else do we want? Maybe Bharat bond, right? Bharat bond. Uh, sorry, the Bharat bond is EBB ETF. Okay, there's no EBB ETF. Oh, the Bharat bonds were launched, I think, in uh, 2019. So in 2017 data, they won't be there. So let us just see if there is net uh, the Nippon ETF uh, for guilt, guilt funds, maybe. An ETF guilt. That is also not there. Let's just see if guilt, any guilt is there. Punjab yeah, guilt is there. Next uh, set F10 guilt is there. Okay, set F10 guilt should work actually. That is basically the 10 year guilt. Okay. Only thing is that this data is a little bit messy. The If you have noticed the set F10 guilt uh, uh, prices, the, uh, the prices are actually pretty wonky. Like they will go up and down because of low liquidity. They are not very reliable. So, what else do you want to do? Okay, maybe instead of that, let's just do a Nifty Bees, a Gold Bees, and Bank Bees. Suppose. Okay, let's just try these three. Okay, Bank Bees. So since this is just for practice, so we'll just uh, use these. Okay. Now I think this should have been done. Okay. 
So now, again, now I'll be collating every all of it into one data frame like I did yesterday. I'll be using the data dot table or byte list. Okay. So uh, it's always a good idea to make successive objects with different names. So that if you screw up some uh, syntax in between, the previous object is still saved. Because when you are doing analysis on large data sets, no, each analysis, like each bunch of code can take quite a bit of time to compile. Okay, so you don't want to keep doing it again and again and again in case you try to uh, be smart about it and try to uh, like uh, keep the object name same for each successive step. step. Okay, so like right now, maybe I'll make it into a uh, call data like I did yesterday. So this is a different name from data, right? So call data is data dot table list data, and I'll just write fill equal to two just in case if there's any problems with the data. Okay. So control L paste. Okay, so call data has been compiled. Now let's just look at it. And look all data. It is more than two lakhs. Is it two lakhs or twenty lakhs? I don't know. It's twenty-two lakhs. Yeah, twenty-two lakh rows. Okay. So now what I need to do is I need to take out bank piece from it. I need to take out uh, nifty piece from it, and I need to take out the uh, this one from it, what do you say? The gold piece from it. Okay, so let's just, uh, uh, what we can do is see, there are some smart ways of doing it. Maybe like you can write one line of code and just get it over with. But what I'll do is I'll break it up into all the steps of it so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, and uh, later on we can discuss some shortcut methods of doing it also. Okay, so usually I'll just write a one line of code and finish it off. But now I'll be breaking it up into multiple parts. Okay, so basically what I'll be doing is first let's uh, extract the nifty data. Okay, so nbs, nbs that is the object for nifty data, so nifty bees call data such that uh, call data dollar. What is the name for the this one? Uh, the symbol of it. Let's just see what are the names, names of call data. Okay, so you what you want is the symbol basically. So I'll just copy this, paste it here. Double equal to fifty these. Okay. Then I'll be doing the same thing. So when you press Control D, it basically replicates the same. Uh, uh, it basically duplicates the same row. Okay, so I'll just pressing control D thrice. Right? In one of them, I'll be writing GBs, that is gold bees. And in one of them, I'll write BBs or bank bees. Okay. So I'll just run all of these three. Okay. So let's just check whether the uh, call, uh, the number of rows, that is the dates of nifty bees is equal to gold bees is equal to bank bees. Okay, so and row and bees, sorry, and bees is double equal to and row gold bees. Okay, that is true. So both of them are there for all the dates. Next, same thing I'll do for bank bees also. True. So basically now we have got three assets which have got complete data for all of them. Okay. Now one important thing I need to make sure is that uh, like one thing is that I need to reform the dates of all of them. Okay. So reform the dates of all of them to the correct format that R uses. Then I have to sort them by the dates because uh, when you are doing the uh, this one mean variance, you will need them to be sorted in the uh, dates uh, as dates. Okay, and after that, uh, I'll be, uh, after that, I'll have to combine them into one data frame. Okay, so this step we could have done before itself. So we'll uh, do it before it, it's, it just makes sense. Like if you uh, convert the uh, original data frame that is called data dates into date format, then when you extract the NBs, GBs and BBs from that, you'll be getting the date format preserved in that. 
in those also, right? So let's just do that first. So call data. So call data dollar date is equal to as dot date call data dollar timestamp. That is the date, uh, date which comes in the uh, CM half copy. Okay, then comma format equal to percentage. Okay, let's just see what format is it it is in. Okay, so suppose I write head call data. Okay, so in this you can see it is first day, then month is in alphabetical format and then full year is written. Okay, so it will be percentage D hyphen percentage B hyphen percentage capital Y. Close this. Okay, then I'll be ordering the entire data set by the dates. So, call data is equal to call data within that order by call data dollar timestamp close. And that comma is because I'm specifying that the rows need to be ordered by the order of timestamp. Okay, so let's just run these two. Copy. Okay, it will take some time because it's a very, very long data, it's a data set. Okay, so that is done. Okay, so now I'll just show you the call data. Sorry, head of call data. So here you can see that a column has been formed, new column has been formed in which the date is in appropriate format and the time step column is as it is uh, here. So basically that happened because I specified a separate column for it by call data dollar date is equal to as date this is this. Okay, so now we have got a separate column for date. Oh, sorry. Uh, so uh, if that was there, then I should have ordered it by date, right? <laughs> Okay, running it again. Call data. Okay, so now it is in correct format. It starts with 2018. So earlier it was like uh, I tried to order it by the uh, timestamp. So timestamp has been taken as a character. So however the character is being ordered in its uh, programming is the way it is coming now. So after I convert it into date, now it will be coming in order of the dates. So now it is ordered. Okay, now again. I'll extract these three. So basically once an object is made, you can remake it. It will basically replace the object if the name is the same. Okay, so I'm basically remaking the entire thing again. Okay, now that that is done, now I'll be, uh, now I have to check the data. Now, uh, remember yesterday what we had, the mistake that I had done. The mistake that I had done was that I had not checked the data first. Okay, so, uh, let's just see the histogram of the close uh, values and these oh sorry and these dollar close uh, obviously i wanted for the close values right so you can see that it is bunched up into two different you can see it is bunched up into two different places okay one is in thousand more than thousand and one is uh, zero to two hundred uh, sorry, it will be definitely more than zero. So it is basically uh, le slightly less than 100 to 200. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to convert this older because it underwent split at some point of time. So we need to convert these into this. Okay. So when we are encountering a split, we basically have to divide the previous uh, numbers before that date by the split ratio. Okay. So if it was like one, one is to 10 split, I will have to divide it by uh, divide it by 10. Okay. Now understand that uh, although uh, for doing it properly, you need to know at which date the split happened. Like that is how you would be thinking right now, right? Like I need to know at which date it happened. I'll target the uh, data before that date and then I'll convert it. However, we have a much more simpler solution here. Now, since there is a wide chasm of prices between the two, like right after one is to 10 split, they are usually in their hundreds. Okay. Before the one is to 10 split, they were all in thousands, right? There was nothing less than thousand, right? So let's just see 
so uh, you can see in the histogram itself there's nothing less than 1000 everything is more than 1000 right so i can easily specify that if the price is more than 1000 then divided by 10 otherwise uh, retain the price okay so that can be done by a specific function in base r which is called if else it works similar to the if statement of excel okay so uh, you, if you know the if, uh, if statement of excel you know if bracket start you specify the logical condition comma value if true comma value if false okay this also works exactly the same only remember that if you are using if else the program expects that what it will need to spit out is a vector okay if you are trying to make a data frame out of the uh, whatever is being spitted out the, uh, out of the if else that won't work it will cause some error okay so let me just show you the correct notation what it will be so correct notation will be n b's dollar close sorry i'll make it capital because that is how it is there in this so if else okay n b's is more than 1000 so this is the uh, uh, this is the logical that i used if it is more than 1000 then sorry n b's dollar close it has to be n b's dollar close dollar close is more than 1000 then the true value will be n b's dollar close divided by 10 because it was 1 is to 10 split comma value if false if it is less than 1000 then we'll retain the value so n b's dollar close okay copy okay so let me just show you once more so if we see the head of nbs now you can see that the older values are all in thousands right you can see all older values are all in thousands okay so i'll now i'll run this okay now let's see the head again now you can see that these close values have been modified they have been divided by 10 okay so earlier it was 1000 now it is 10 rest are being maintained but we don't need them anyway so we can only work with the close we need to work with the close only so we'll be just modifying the close okay now let's do the same thing for gold bees and bank bees let's just see their histograms first okay so hist of g bees dollar close okay so in this one also there was a time when it was more than 2500 at one point okay so like basically each unit was worth one gram of gold okay after that what they have done is they have reduced it okay so let me just stretch it out for you so that the bin sizes oh bin sizes don't change huh? okay bin sizes don't change automatically okay then there's no point okay so then what we'll need to do is uh, we'll need to find out, figure out what was the ratio of bank B split. No, sorry, the gold B split. So let's just go Google it off. Gold B's split ratio. Okay. So this was the split history for Nippon uh, gold bees. You can see it was 100 face value. Now it is one face value. So it was a 1 is to 100 split. So we'll need to divide it by 100. So basically uh, what I'll do is if it is, uh, if the gold bees is more than, wait, 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 where did it go? So if the gold bees is more than 2000 maybe. Okay. So if it is more than 2000, then divide it by 100. Okay. So that's what we'll do. Wait, how come it is still 500? Wait, what we'll need to do then is, uh, see, the thing is that, has there been multiple splits of gold bees? Okay, anyway, uh, what we'll first, we'll uh, do this, after that, we'll figure that out because anyway, the prices which are less than 2000 are not going to be affected, right? So let's just convert the previous values of 2000, uh, above 2000 and then we will uh, see what exactly is going on on this side. Okay, so 
the same thing. So what I'll do is I'll just copy the entire statement. This becomes GBs. This becomes GBs. This becomes GBs. And I'll make the condition as $2,000 close divided by 100 because that was the face value. And here it is GBs. Okay. So I'll just copy this, paste this. Now let's see the histogram again. Okay. Now it seems perfectly fine. So it was only showing up to 500 because that was the bin size for the histogram, the default bin size that it had selected. But apart from that, it seems to be perfectly fine. Everything is below 50, basically. Okay. So let's continue then. So this thing is done. Okay. Now the next last one left is bank base. So let's just check that out. Is of bank base dollar close. Okay, so here also similar thing is there. Okay, so we need to cut off. We need to, okay, let's just see what the split was of bank B's. Okay, split uh, has not split in share value. Here it is there, no? Huh. So it happened in December of 2019. And it split from uh, uh, split by a ratio of 10. Okay. So let's just uh, do that for this. So in this one, if it is more than 2000, we'll be dividing it by 10. Otherwise, no. Okay. So let's just do this. Control D. Okay. So now I'll show you the, uh, now I'll just replace the GBs by BBs because just replacing each of the letters is pointless. So what I'll be doing is I'll be using the replace function that is control H. Okay, so you press control H. So first you highlight, let me just show you. So first you highlight wherever you want to replace, you press control H. In that you feed in what you want to replace, then you feed in what you want to replace it with. Then you place in selection, in the selected place only you want to replace and replace all. Okay, so everything has been replaced. Now we'll be converting it by a ratio of 10 if it is more than 2000. And let's run it. Now histogram. Now histogram is perfect. Okay. Now there's one interesting thing that you must have noted. So in the histogram of BBs, okay, uh, it is uh, almost a normal graph, right? Normal, a normal graph. But if you look at uh, the histogram of GBs, it is like point, point, like that basically, right? So it has basically a lot of values under 30 then less number of values between 30 to 40, and then a lot of values more than 40. So this basically shows uh, how the gold bees progressed it during its lifetime or how gold progressed. So basically once it has gone up to a value, it just stays at that value. Okay, it doesn't, mostly doesn't come down. Okay, so I guess, I guess that is why this sort of bimodal pattern is happening. We'll have to study the charts for seeing why exactly else if there is any other reason. But that's the first reason that comes to my mind. Let's just see for Nifty Bees how it has come now. The new histogram. So with Nifty Bees also, a lot of the time it was below 120. And only recently it has come up above 120, basically uh, over the last two years, basically. It has go, uh, come up uh, above 120 and is now around uh, 170 to 200, that, that range basically. So that is why there are less number of values, uh, frequencies in this area and higher frequencies in this area. Okay. Chalo. Let's continue then. So these three have been done. Now what we'll need to do is we'll need to form a data frame of these three uh, close values of these three. Now we know that all of them have already been arranged by date. So we don't need to worry about that. Okay. All we need to do is combine them into a data frame. Okay. So uh, let's just call it what mean variance MV data. Okay, suppose MV data is equal to. Uh, so how you create a data frame is by the function called data dot frame. Okay, so data dot frame bracket start. After that, you need to specify what columns you want to fit into the data frame and separate them by commas. Okay, now. If you just specify the uh, 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 just specify the columns, 
their names will be extracted from the areas where you want them, where you are taking them from. Okay. The other method of doing it is that you specify the names while you are writing the function. So here I'll be specifying the names. So first let's write suppose gold. So gold is equal to, so gold equal to meaning I'm naming that column gold is equal to GB's dollar close. Okay, comma. So now I'm specifying the second column that is suppose nifty equal to NB's dollar close. Okay. And the last column that I'm specifying, bank piece, that is bank is equal to BB's dollar close. Okay. So now I have, so this is basically how I'm making the data frame now. So let's just do it. I'll clear up the screen. Okay. So now let's just see the head of MB data. Okay, so now you see that it has been created in the uh, format that we want. Okay, the gold is in uh, tens, uh, uh, the nifty is in hundreds, bank nifty is, is in two fifties. Okay, now, now we can easily, uh, so one, oh sorry, I forgot to tell you one important thing that I wanted to teach during this lesson. That is, uh, so after this basically we'll be applying the mean variance and we'll be getting the result. Okay, before this, there was one basic thing that I wanted to tell you, which will save a lot of your time. That is that once you have made a data frame in the format that you want it. Okay, once it has been made after a lot of your struggle. Okay, you don't need to run the entire script all over again next time you want to use the data in the same format. Okay, what you can do it, you can save it as a R data file. Okay, remember that our data file is a highly compressed format of storing data frames in which data frames, objects, whatever, uh, whatever objects you want. But our data is specifically like I use it for data frames. Okay, so, uh, but it is highly compressed, like it would take up very less amount of space compared to uh, the all of the uh, other files like CSV files together basically. Okay, so let me just show you how to do it. So like call data was the data that we had created before that was from 2017, 2018 to 2022. Okay. So how you do it is save call data comma file equal to whatever name you want. Suppose test, test dot capital R capital D small a small t small a and quotation close and close bracket. So this is the way you need to save it. Okay, R data with R and D capitals and everything should be in quotations. Okay, so I'll just save this. It will take some time because it's a big file. Meanwhile, let's have a sip of the drink. Okay, so it looks like it is done. Now let's look at where it will be saved. Now, when you install R first time into your system, it will ask you whether you want to make a personalized library or not. If you just go with the default library, then it will set it in your documents folder. So whenever you switch on the R console, the default is to take anything from the documents folder and save anything to the documents folder. If you want to change from where you are taking the files or to where you are saving the files, you'll have to uh, set the working directory. Okay, it is called working directory. And the uh, function for that is set WD, small s, small e, small t, set small w, small d. Okay, set WD. Uh, you can uh, learn how to use it by just placing a question mark, set WD on the R console and reading the documentation of it. Okay, how to use the set WD. Okay, so now what I wanted to you wanted you to see was okay documents here I, the test dot R data has been saved. You can see how much is the size that is sixty two MB approximately sixty three MB sixty two point seven MB. Okay, now let's just look at how much the entire space of this one was uh, since we had taken the entire post two thousand seventeen. This is two hundred twenty MB. That is the size. Okay. So 220 MB has been compressed 
into 62.7 whatever that was mb okay so that is the way uh, that is why this is useful okay plus you don't need to run everything all over again you have already saved it here okay now how do you once you have saved it how do you load it you load it using load load test dot r data okay close bracket and it will get loaded okay so this is how you do it okay now let's just get on to the uh, working of the mean variance function okay so uh, i have already created this data frame now the next important thing that i need to do is now since i have the function already made uh, we won't be going to the depths of that function that function is incredibly complicated to explain that will take more than an hour by itself itself okay so let's just not go into that i'll show you how to use the function today so that you can use it to your benefit with whatever assets you want okay so with this class you should be able to select out whatever assets you want and you should be able to run this function by yourself okay so let's just continue so how to so whenever you have made a ready made function like the one that i, I sent to you it will be a dot r file okay and that will have only the function or it can have a multiple sets of functions or many things else also so it will be saved as a dot r file okay so what you need to do is you need to source that uh, file onto the console okay so how you do that is you basically uh, the function for that is source bracket quotation write the name uh, uh, write the name of it if you have saved it in your working directory or write the file of, uh, the uh, the file path of it if you have saved it somewhere else now since i have saved the mean variance portfolio uh, uh, the mean variance function in the working directory that is documents so i'll be copying it from there itself i'll be taking it from there itself so let's just see documents mean variance so in my documents you can see that there is a mean variance function let's just look at the properties it is a dot r file you can see r file is written here okay so i'll just copy the name of it copy the name of it okay so source bracket start paste dot r okay close bracket close okay so i'll just now i'll source it onto this one okay it is done so if you had looked at the documentation of the mean variance syntax where was it was if you if you had looked at it you can see that the function that i have named the na name of that function is mean var capital m mean capital b var okay so that is how we will be using it also so let's just write the code for using it so what will be putting uh, put it put the object into uh, we'll name a object called mv suppose mv is equal to mean var so the first argument was the data so the data here is mv data comma and the next important thing is the precision that we want now since we have only three variables i'll be using going for a higher precision okay so the higher precision how i'll be specify uh, quotation high quotation close close okay so this is how i'll be using it let's just use it okay it is done so you can see that one message came loading package partitions that's because i had to use the package partitions in this to create the weight matrix effectively in the least redundant uh, fashion possible to allow it to have more than uh, just five or six assets okay so otherwise the weight matrix was becoming so huge that it was just not possible to do anything so i had to figure out a clever way of doing it and that worked with the uh, partitions basically now for creating partitions there are a large number of algorithms and they have been going on since ramanujan's time i am not a genius it's very difficult for me to follow all those algos and write my own since there is already something available i'll use it like i said i am scrappy i just hustle using code okay so this is how i'll proceed okay so now that it is done now uh, let's see what is the structure of mv 
Okay, so MV is the object in which I have uh, done to use the function. So let's just see what is the structure. For structure of anything, you can use str. Okay, it will tell you what is inside it, basically, MV. Okay, so you can see that MV is a list of three. First is the weight data, which is a data frame. Okay, so weight data is basically the entire weight data of uh, this, uh, you know, whatever was created during the course of this function. That is of not, no use to us. After this, I have made the next uh, uh, next part of it as the best weight. This will be the best weightages of all of them. Okay, and the last is the max return. That is what weights would have given you the max return. So we'll look at them separately. So first, let's look at the best weight. So how do we call it? We'll write mv. That is the object dollar best underscore weight. Okay, so you can see. It has come. So in that the in the best weights, you have got 32, 62 for gold, 62% for gold, 38% for nifty, and zero for bank nifty. Okay. And the return is 0 0.05%. 0.05%, uh, but remember, this percentage return is for the daily time frame because the dates, the returns that we have used are daily. Right, so it is basically a daily data frame, not a, not a monthly data frame. Uh, like if you had looked at uh, the way Cora had done it, he had taken monthly data. Okay, so his returns would have shown higher. That is basically because in a month, the index will move or gold will move more than it will do in a day. Right, so here the returns, the average return is 0.05%. The risk is 0.66, that is the SD of the returns. Okay, and the sharp is 0 0.07. That is still a pretty shitty sharp. Okay, but that's the daily sharp. So we'll, we are happy with it. We are okay with it. Okay, now let's look at what it would have given maximum. Okay, so what weightages would have given us the max return? So max underscore return. Okay, wow, so max underscore return is for gold. <laughs> that is a little weird. Ah, okay, so let's just see what is the, what is the min max of gold? <laughs> I had not expected this. <laughs> I had expected it would be nifty or something, but uh, this is not what I had expected, seriously. Okay, so let's just look at it. So, uh, so what I'll be doing is I'll be applying a function on the MV data, apply MV data. Uh, suppose I'll be applying it via columns. So two comma uh, summary, I want the summary of all of them. Okay, so minimum is 26, maximum is 49. Minimum is 83, maximum is 198. So this is more than twice. Okay. What is the current go current? So let's just see in the data such that. Uh, the last row basically. So in row and so this is the last row. The gold is at 44. 171 and 339. So let's just compare it with the minimum value. Okay. So 44.36 divided by 26.2 and 200. So it is 169% increase for gold, then 171. Actually, it started at 107. It started at 26.43. So let's just uh, Start, uh, let's just do it not min to max. Let's start, uh, see the starting value and the last value, how much it has grown. So the first value was 26.43 of this one, 26.43. Okay. Then for Nifty, the first value is 107.8 divided by 0.5. Sorry, the current value we want, sorry. So it is current value is 171.64. 171.64 divided by 
159 for bank b's it was uh, bank b's what was the starting value bank b's starting value was 257.8 okay so the denominator will be 257.8 the numerator will be the numerator will be the last value that is 339 339.31 okay so ah interesting so you can see you know gold has got a return profile from beginning of 2018 till now of 168% for nifty it is 159% for bank nifty it is 132% so clear winner is gold so we 100% in gold since 2018 till now the winner of the indices versus uh gold is gold it's very interesting like i had also not expected this maybe at the peak of uh, nifty like in last uh, september or october october maybe september october whenever it was at peak that time it would have shown for nifty but right now it is for gold okay so uh, i think uh, uh, you have learned quite a bit today you have learned at least how to use this function so you can use it for any number of assets up till 20 okay if you are using uh, 20 assets then please maintain low precision okay so most of you will not need 20 assets like you can compare indices you can compare uh, different asset classes if you have the data for it you will be able to compare it okay so uh, i hope you learned something today and i'll see you in the next video until then cheers okay let's close this off stop share